Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I have got a request to do a fire element list, so let's uh, start one out. Flutal ban. Okay. A fire element list is fairly straightforward. Uh, he comes with one big drawback, and that is he has no utility spells. He's basically just a blaster. He's also fairly weak until he gets to about uh, level 5. So you have to be a little careful. If you're just beginning out with casters, I would suggest starting with a high elf. And a fire, fire elementalist is a good start. The easiest caster start would be a conjurer, I think. But let's go through the fire ele elementalist and, and see how we do. I haven't played one of these. What we want to do is turn our skills onto manual, as usual, and keep spellcasting, conjurations, and fire magic on. You could turn off fire magic and spellcasting and boost conjurations initially. I just like to keep them all on. It's good enough for now. We start off with the Flame Tongue spell. And uh, Flame Tongue is a good spell. Let's take a look at our book of... Book of what? Book of Flames. Stands to reason. Um, flame Tongue is a good spell. Flo Throw Flame is a level 2 spell, which actually does less damage than Flame Tongue. It just has a better range. I don't usually bother to memorize that. Inner Flame is a little dangerous to use. Conjure Flame is always useful. Uh, I would suggest memorizing that. Inner Flame is a little difficult to use. You have to get your hexes up and you have to make sure you kill the monster who is hexed at a decent distance from yourself or else it could uh, it could kill you. Uh, Sticky Flame is one of the best mid-level spells in the game and Fireball is as well very good. Once we get those two up and running we're doing fairly well. So I just stick with Conjure Flame until about level 4 and then memorize Sticky Flame usually. And that works out most of the time. Um, if I don't get killed by this bat. You might notice initially that Flame Tongue is not very accurate. It tends to miss a little bit. That gets better. Pick up the first weapon you find. Even if it's just a dagger. Because it's better than nothing. Level 2 already. I would suggest starting a Fire ele Elementalist with a High Elf is probably your best bet. Um, a Deep Elf will raise his skills a little faster, but he's also much weaker. Really, all the Elves are fairly fragile, but the High Elf at least has is a little more forgiving in terms of hit points. Be very wary of Jackal Packs. I only have 5 mana here. Luckily those two jackals died. The other advantage of the deep elf is you are guaranteed intelligence raises whereas the high elf it's a split between dexterity and intelligence. You'll also notice that flame tongue its range has increased already actually. Um, but flame tongue is a hungering spell at the beginning of the game. We generally want to get our strength up to 8. That's about minimum for carry capacity. So we're going to boost strength and we got uh, dexterity, unfortunately. We will just have to deal with that. Upon the next level up at level 6, we're going to raise intelligence. And we have found a wizard hat. The wizard starts off with a wizard hat, but no elementalists do. So we'll put that on. It's plus two. That's just about the best kind of wizard hat we could find, apart from a uh, hat of intelligence or sea invisible. Okay, we're getting bombarded with darts, so let's just run away here. We're almost at full mana, so we'll wait for them. That rat, for some reason, took three attacks to kill. We're going to switch out our dagger for an elven short sword. Elves use elven weapons better than regular ones. 
However, here is a whip. We're going to pick that up. It's a glowing whip, so it could have a brand on it. Then again, it could be cursed. Generally, you can get by with flame tongue until you get sticky flame up. What you might want to do is avoid some of the more difficult encounters. So let's see if we run into a situation like that. We only have one level to go. Well, half a level to go. Oh, we found some glowing gauntlets. Let's pick those up and try them on. Well, they are cursed, but that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, except when we want to put on a ring. Just make sure you don't run towards your enemies. Draw one and one only if you can, and then pull back, let them chase you. And once you've hung back, you can rest back there. But if you go charging towards them, more enemies might show up. Generally, your first test will be one of these adders, or perhaps an ogre or a centaur. We had an, agar, an adder, so we just stood there and and took him out. We took the risk of getting poisoned there. But you have to take some risks. Uh, now at level 4, we are in a position to memorize Sticky Flame. We shall do so. We will also get Conjure Flame. If you wish, you can get Conjure Flame early at level 3. But it's not necessary. We're almost on level 4. Here's an adder. Now, Sticky Flame is more or less uncastable. We've got about a 50% chance. And it's fairly weak. Oh, that's Crazy Youth. We are going to avoid Crazy Youth now. We can press X on the keyboard. Move our cursor over him. And press E. And that will mark him off as do not approach. I could probably beat Crazy Youth at this point. But it's probably better to get a little more experience and get Sticky Flame up to a respectable level. Crazy Youth isn't that dangerous, but his quarterstaff is extremely unpredictable <clears throat> and very dangerous. So we don't want to take very many hits with it. Also with the Fire Elementalist, you end up getting seduced into keeping your, your fire conjurations and spell casting on. You should probably get into dodging as soon as possible. But you'll want to do that once Sticky Flame is castable. So it's at 41% now. We are just focusing at the moment on Sticky Flame. However, that poses a little bit of a problem because once you get Sticky Flame castable, you have to be adjacent to your enemies to use it and it is at that point where you don't have any dodging ability. That presents a problem with ogres often. So we'll see how I handle it. Generally you should have... draw one, there we go. Generally you should have a backup option. Okay, we've got three enemies, but I think only one of them saw us, so two of them, that's okay. Rest up here. And continue to explore. Once Sticky Flame gets to about 25%, I will go take out Crazy Youth and take his quarterstaff. Crazy Youth's quarterstaff is usually enchanted fairly well. And a quarterstaff is a good starting weapon for somebody who has absolutely no skill in any weapon. I'm going to pick up this elven dagger. It's a dagger of protection. That's probably a good thing to start with. I'll drop the short sword and we'll keep the dagger of protection. It's not going to do much damage but we're wielding it for its protection abilities now. I think it grants three armor class. Let's see. Plus five. Plus five to armor class. So that's pretty good. It's more or less like wearing armor. 
And since there's that bit of a hole in our game as a fire elementalist where we have sticky flame running but we have no defense, uh oh. Okay, we're going to run. Let's try to find some stairs up. There we go. I'm not too worried about the hobgoblins, it's the ogre at the end of them. Ogres are a little difficult to take out at this point. Hmm. Let's try conjuring a flame. There we go. That is our utility spell, Conjure Flame. You can always block off corridors with it. I did not want to be adjacent to the ogre. I did not want to use Sticky Flame on him because I could get hit for potentially 31 damage, I suppose. Sticky Flame's at 28%. Let's just continue to explore this level. Finish it off and then go take out Crazy Youth. Thing about unreliable casting is it usually fails you when you need it most. And I don't want to take many hits from Crazy Eve's quarterstaff. Here's Sif Muna, we found her first. We'll worship her. Veamet's another option. Veamet will give you a wizardry bonus and he'll give you a kickstart on your fire abilities. I like Sif Muna, especially in this case because A, I found her earlier and B, I don't really need any blasting spells until much later. I am in much more desperate need of utility spells and Sif Muna is, well, more likely to give you that but still not very likely. Veamet will not give you utility spells. Okay, that's the level cleared. Let's go upstairs and we'll face Crazy Youth. Where is he? We'll go back here, we'll walk into the walk into the area that's been marked off. We can press E again to reduce the uh, exclusion area to one tile. That's useful for blocking off doors and that sort of thing. And press E once more to remove it entirely. Now we could use our Conjure Flame trick here. I think we can take him out. He is not very strong. There we go. Level 6, we're raising intelligence. And we got two levels of intelligence there. Crazy Youth has left us a bounty. We will pick up both the Quarterstaff of Chaos and the Cloak. It's a plus 2 cloak, and that's good. I'm going to hold off on using the Quarterstaff of Chaos. The Elven Dagger at this point grants the defensive ability, and that's more important. As for forestry and trees, that sort of thing, you can conjure a flame directly onto them and start a forest fire. That's useful for killing enemies in forests and for getting through areas blocked off by trees. Okay, here is... Let's go upstairs. I would have taken them on, but I'm starving, and... Uh, as you can see, our spells are still fairly hungry, Sticky Flame in particular, and that's what I was planning to use on him. Let's go down here. And down again since we finished this level. There is an Orc Priest wandering around on there somewhere, but I'm not too worried about him. And I'm continuing to use Flame Tongue. Just be aware that Oh, it looks like we have the shoals and the snake pits on this level. That's okay. No, a hungry ghost. Luckily, we just ate. Let's see if Sticky Flame works on the hungry ghost. I'm not sure if it does. It does work. I just stood there and uh, conjure uh, flame tongued him. It does work, but it doesn't continue to uh, keep him burning. We will use Sticky Flame on the Worker Ants, and then just run away. Sticky Flame is very good for kiting. There is nothing in particular that we want here. Let's continue to explore. What we're looking at for is Elven Armor. 
just get their attention here and then wait around the corner. Looks like the jackal pack has wandered off somewhere. See, I ran towards my enemies there, and uh, luckily there was only a hobgoblin, but that could have been foolish. I should have just let the let the worker ant come to me. It's these little habits you have to pick up to become a good player and crawl. And you just have to be disciplined enough to continue to do them under any circumstances. When you cast your fire spells over water, it creates clouds of steam, which cause extra damage. So this is a good place to fight enemies. Our sticky flame range is a little better than it used to be. We hardly did any damage to the worker ant, so we're going to sticky flame them. Kill them and chop them up. After you sticky flame, at this point, you should generally run away and allow the flame to continue to damage him. I have been able to cast Fireball for a little while now. We'll, we'll go ahead and memorize it now. It's still at 45%, but this is how you get lured into overtraining your spells. We have to hold off on Fireball. Once we get Sticky Flame down to about 5%, we're going to switch out for some defensive magic, or er, defensive uh, skills. Sticky Flame gets quite powerful after a while. And it's a fairly good spell because if you accidentally turn a corner and run into an enemy, you can apply a Sticky Flame to them. Alright, here's where you can do pretty much nothing. I cannot damage him. Even pressing the Flame Tongue button does nothing because he's immune to fire. That's where we have to use some of our backup options. Let's test this wand. It's confusion. We'll wield the quarterstaff of chaos and tab. And uh, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but one of those hits got him. Let's put the dagger back. Let's pick up that longsword too. I like longswords. Um, the other option for dealing with that Crimson Imp is simply to let him follow you, go to a staircase, and then climb up and leave him. Ice Beasts are beautiful when you're a Fire Elementalist. I just finished him off with a Sticky Flame there. But your Fire Spells do good damage to Ice-based creatures. We've, pip we've picked up a number of rings and we are now facing a player ghost named Joom. He's a deep dwarf necromancer. Well, player ghosts aren't that smart. And being a necromancer, he doesn't have much in the way of ranged offensive weaponry apart from pain. So we're going to lay down a fire cloud, step towards him. And he's walked into it. So we're going to lay down another fire cloud and just pelt up him. And he died very quickly in the fire. Mm. These jellies are a little difficult. They are easier than they used to be now. But you don't want... you want to kill them immediately. They do good damage and they also eat anything in the dungeon in, uh, in their way. As for throw flame and, and inner flame, I don't need them. Inner, um, sorry, uh, Inner Flame's a good, fun spell to hang around with, or to play around with, don't get me wrong. There's Prince Ribbit, the Blink Frog, he's going to blink around a little bit. Um, but to continue what I was saying, Inner Flame is not necessary. It, it is a good spell, it does tremendous damage, it's very powerful. And if you do memorize it, I suggest also memorizing flow, Throw Flame so you have the range to be able to take an enemy out that's far away from you and activate the Inner Flame Explosion because you do not want to be in the radius of that Inner Flame Explosion. We are going to light him up with a Sticky Flame and hope that he blinks away. If not, we're just going to run. 
We're taking some damage, quite a bit. And we've also backed ourselves into a corner. That's okay. He is now blinked, as I knew he would eventually, and he dies. From two shots of flame tongue and most mostly sticky flame. Here's another frog. We'll sticky flame him. Hopefully he'll leave a corpse. No. We need to get something to eat. Undead take good damage from fire. So it's not something to be concerned about. Okay, here's something to be concerned about. <clears throat> We're going to block off the hallway with a uh, conjure flame. I don't really want to stand here because of that priest. He can smite me, So, and I'm also nearly starving. So I'm just going to back off and go upstairs for now. And we'll eat a meat ration. This is also probably a good time to test our scrolls. I can only assume that L of which we have seven is most likely identify. If not, it will be remove curse or teleport. All are good scrolls to have identified and are all are good scrolls to have many of. It's a remove curse, that's good because our gloves were cursed and now we can try on these rings. We don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. Plus three ring of evasion, that's good. Adds to our defense and a ring of flight which is not that good. It allows you to fly no oh, failure said 28 percent that's not too bad that could come in handy until we memorize the fly spell when we find it if we find it. Let's read G I can assume that's identify probably and here we go most likely is. Protection from cold is a very good ring to have Especially if we find a ring of fire. You do not really want to wear a ring of fire or a ring of cold. That gives you extra power on your uh, associated spells. But it also gives you a weakness to the opposite. So generally you don't want to wear a ring of fire until you find a ring of protection from cold. And never discount the value of resistances in this game. Protection from magic. Okay. Those are some good rings. We'll probably swap out the ring of flight for, at the moment, protection from magic. That way we're a little more protected against uh, confusion from orc wizards. We also have several other scrolls we can read, so let's go through them. There's teleportation. Fear. Blink. Enchant weapon. Enchant weapon 2. And finally, random uselessness. It's good to get everything identified as soon as possible. Now we're going to blow these last two scrolls of identify on our potions. And generally I can assume that J, we have three of them, is probably curing. The gluggies, X would be the gluggy brown potions. Those are usually potions of uh, porridge, but not necessarily. I like to identify the potions uh, we have one of first, but in this case I want to play it safe, so I'll identify J. It is curing, okay. Just so we have an option to cure or heal. And now we'll do uh, Z here. Restore abilities. We've got some other gloves here. They're probably pretty much the same as the gauntlets we have, except not cursed. Let's try them on. They could be they could be enchanted, but they weren't. So we'll keep the X-Cursed gauntlets on just because they look a little fancier. Here comes the Ogre. Let's keep him away from us with a Conjure Flame. Put one there. And just pepper him with our Flame Tongue. And here we have yet another Crimson Imp. Let's see if we can confuse him with the Wand again. So that worked out well. We just want to make sure that he doesn't blink around too much. We'll wield the Quarterstaff of Chaos. That's our most powerful melee weapon. 
He did blink quite a bit. Oops. I don't know if I killed him. I think I did, but we're going to conjure a flame and just block this fellow off like that and take him out. Our spells are getting fairly powerful now and are able to take out ogres in three shots. And I held down, down tab and killed the Crimson Imp. We'll wield the Dagger of Protection. So because I have these two artifacts, the Ring and the Dagger of Protection, I can put off for a little bit training my defensive skills. Let's see what Sticky Flame is. That's at 8%. We're going to get Fireball upcastable to about, you know, less than 10% and then we'll turn on one of our defensive skills. Flame Tongue, as you see, has its range greatly increased now and is becoming a very useful spell. Let's try on these pair of gauntlets. Generally in Crawl, you never... You never know when something's enchanted, so it's worthwhile to try them on. They're plus zero. Let's put on the X cursed ones, just because they look a little more fancy. Though it doesn't matter at all. Let's head up the stairs here, see what's up there. I generally explore up staircases, but once in a while I miss them. I've been missing a lot in this video. Here's a uh, Goliath Beetle. They are extremely dumb. They're just going to walk through flame to get to you. And they're very slow. So just let them languish in the fire and kill them off. Our great weakness now is running into anything that's resistant or immune to fire. And so far it's only been Crimson Imps, which are no big deal. I applied a sticky flame there. Now, the Orc Priest is invisible. Now I know he's beside me. One of the great things about sticky flame, which takes away some of the horror of unseen horrors, is once you apply a sticky flame to an adjacent creature, they are suddenly visible. So it's a pretty good way of uh, detecting invisible, of seeing invisible, as long as you can light them up. Okay. <clears throat> Let's head down to level 7. There's Blork the Orc. I've done significant damage to him already. Take another shot at him and we'll drag the adder up. Sticky flame him. We're at level 9 and we're going to raise, of course, intelligence. See fireballs at 14%. It's getting there. I don't know what happened to Blork. There he is. He hasn't healed yet. Oh, he's hitting me with frost, huh? That's okay. I could have been wearing the ring of protection from cold, which would have probably saved my potion, but... Sticky Flame the Frog and run away. Hopefully get a chance to eat him before that Phantom comes back, but no. We'll let the Phantom come up to you, just hit him. He'll generally blink away and just don't bother chasing him, just wait till he comes back. Hmm. Probably good to have a dart here or something. We'll throw the dart. Hopefully hit it. Oh, we missed it, but we got it in time before it exploded. Oh, here comes a hill giant. We'll light him up with a sticky flame, which is fairly dangerous. He could have hit us there. And now we're just going to run away and let the sticky flame do its work. Same thing with him. Sticky flame. Sticky Flame is your friend through the mid-game. And we have found a Book of Ice, which is probably the worst book to find as a Fire Elementalist. It's got some great spells, but you do not want to train Fire and Ice until you get to a very high level and you can overcome the penalty. But as it stands now, our 
ice magic is minus four and that will train very very slowly fireballs at ten percent as soon as it gets down to nine we're going to turn off perhaps conjurations let's draw one orc away I wanna oops okay I wanna focus the weaker orc now we're gonna light him up with sticky flame ow run away and that orc was extremely tough for some reason grab a bite to eat get some scrolls and continue to explore we've got a pretty good mana pool now um, but there are some there are some pretty bad creatures coming after us sticky flame and run Where'd he go? Oh, he fell through a shaft. I took a chance on fighting all of them because I knew there was a staircase behind me and it was an area I had already cleared. So it was fairly safe to do it. <clears throat> Here's the temple, finally. Might be a good place to go and drop off our books. The temple is safe. It's nice to take a little breather in here and make a stash if you have to. We've already chosen our god, so we'll drop off our books. We'll drop the longsword here in case I want it for later. And you might want to drop anything that you think is very valuable that you might lose. Okay, we're going to identify the slimy brown potion, confusion. Let's drop that, it's useless. And let's put on this amulet. Amulet of Rage. That's not very good for us. We don't want to go berserk. We can't cast spells while berserked. I mean, theoretically, you can put it on, go berserk, and get a few steps of, of swiftness. I don't really bother to do that, but... Maybe that's why I'm not a very good player. <laughs> All right, that's level seven. Down we go. Here's the orc warrior that foolishly fell down the shaft. We'll just stand on the stairs, light him up with sticky flame, climb upstairs and run away from him. a so black bear. They go berserk sometimes when they're damaged. But they're also good to eat. As you can see, our flame tongue is still very effective. Oh, it's Maurice. Okay. He goes invisible as you can see. Now I've bumped into him, I'll light him up with a sticky flame, and now I'll run away. I'd like to reapply the sticky flame. There he is, he's close enough. There we go. A short sword of electrocution. Well, that could have been bad. Those do a lot of damage, and that is actually worth picking up. Okay. I think Estachio saw me there. I'm not sure. We're going to conjure some flames. Kill the Goliath beetle. House fireball, 6%. We will turn off conjurations and let's start focusing on dodging. Hmm, Stash has wandered off. There he is. Okay. Fireball costs five mana. We have five of them. It does cause quite a bit of racket, but it's got a good range to it, so we're going to hit him with a fireball. And another one. And another one. There he goes. He's also got some nifty armor. Let's try it on. 
It's armor of magic resistance. That's certainly better than our robe. And it hasn't made our spells any more difficult to cast. Even though regular leather armor, I think, uh, increases the spell difficulty a little bit. Let's eat something small here. Take out the easy guy. This is a good situation for a fireball. We can hit both of them at the same time. Flame tongue. Get sticky flame. Whip around the corner out of sight of the orc priest. One more step. We're adjacent to the orc priest. We'll sticky flame him. And here comes a frog to eat. Excellent. Let's climb upstairs. Nothing. Now that we have Fireball up and running, we're in pretty good shape. I'm glad I picked up that magic resistance and I might even... I have protection from magic ring on as well. So I can be fairly safe against getting Abyss banished. I'm just gonna Fireball her. There we go. We're poisoned and we're near starving. We have nine bread rations and five meat rations. Let's eat one of them. And here comes a centaur. We'll try the Wand of Confusion on him. We'll try again. He's confused, we'll run up to him, get a sticky flame on him, and that should take care of him. And also provide a meal. Oh, that's right, we ate the... He hasn't seen us yet. We're gonna blast him with confusion. <clears throat> we have no evocation. We have no evocation skills, so I had to take that chance. Get a sticky flame on him for mana conservation purposes and take him out. There's lots of food around here, but what does it want us to pick up? A gluggy brown potion, okay. Might as well drop one of the Wands of Confusion. And we'll pick up the Gluggy Brown Potion. There's also a robe. This might be worth trying on. And we'll have to drop these six chunks. That's what's burdening us. But that's okay, because we just ate a meat ration. Let's try on the robe. Uh, it's a plus two robe of magic resistance. We have a plus two leather armor of magic resistance. We'll keep the leather armor. I'm still carrying that whip. Let's try it out. Whip of pain. Well, that would be excellent if we were a necromancer, but we are not. They're also fairly rare to find. Let's get our dagger back. We'll probably want to drop most of these weapons fairly soon. We'll just wait around the corner for them. Sticky flame them. Centaurs, generally, you want to stay in um, melee range with them. They are not... They are less dangerous, let's say, in melee range. Potion of Beneficial Mutation. I really want that. I love Beneficial Mutations. But for now, we'll buy all the heal wounds. Those will come in handy. And we'll get a curing. I'd like to get the speed, but I don't want to spend that much. And that will identify our heal wounds potions, if we have any. Oh, we have seven. Well, oh, that's good. Let's try these other scrolls. Noise. This could be enchant armor. Let's hope that it is and try it. Yes. We'll save the other one. Emulation. And finally, Cursed Jewelry. That's okay. Uh, we could read or remove Cursed Scroll if we wanted, but we won't. Let's also test out this wand. And I'm assuming it doesn't do any damage to anything. Paralysis. Okay. We'll drop that. We don't want it. 
might come in handy, but we have confusion, which is more or less the same thing. And we're terrible with both of them, and any really dangerous monsters we won't be able to paralyze or confuse. Let's apply a sticky flame here and run away. We got a space on him, so I just hit him with a flame tongue. Jump right into range of the centaur. He's got a nice bow. And here's Okuaru. Let's do the old confusion trick. We still have absolutely no ability to damage Crimson Imps until we get another spell. We could probably memorize that ice spell and be able to take them out. But the Quarterstaff of Chaos is working. Actually, let's, let's just see. We'll go back to the temple. Oh, that's right. This is the higher book of ice. A freezing aura is the only thing we could consider there, but it's not worth getting. And I can't apply it to my dagger anyway, because it already has a brand on it. Um, let's drag the phantom upstairs and just hit him with our flame tongue. light up the ogre and run away and the rest of them will fall easily we're getting pretty tough now so I'm standing toe to toe with these enemies something's invisible I'm going upstairs immediately okay It's adjacent to me, so I'm just going to blindly sticky flame around. Let's go upstairs. Oh, there's an unseen horror here. Okay. Run into the hallway. Now it's time to quaff our heal wounds potions. I don't know where he is. But I will as soon as I sticky flame him. There we go. Now we can hit him. I think he's still alive. There we go. The sticky flame ran out, and now he's dead. That was close. You want to try and maneuver those unseen horrors into hallways. And generally they don't follow you upstairs, because they jump around so much, but this one did. So it was a fairly dangerous situation. You could also blanket the area with fireballs. That gets a little messy. Looks like the lair might be on this level. We're seeing a lot of lair type enemies around. Let's fireball these two. I'm not using fireball too much yet. Mostly to can save mana and hunger. And it's getting fairly powerful, so it's definitely an option. But Sticky Flame is so effective. Ooh, he got me, made me sick, but that's okay. I'll just rest out of it. And here's the lair. With an elephant guarding it. Okay, we need to do heavy damage to the elephant. Sticky Flame will be good. So we'll fireball a couple times. Pass. It's only one of them. So we'll apply Sticky Flame and run away. As long as they come after you one at a time, you should be able to handle elephants. We'll eat the meat ration. Okay, we'll we'll drop the five chunks of elephant flesh. Is that how many we have? Yeah. Luckily, we can make a stash soon. We're starting to get pretty full. Let's read potion of identify and. See if we can identify some of these potions.
make sure we have no unidentified rings. Okay. Cure mutation. Very valuable potion. And we have an unidentified scroll. Let's read that. Magic mapping. Okay, that's good. Let's explore the rest of this level before we go down into the lair. You never know when you might have to pop out. I've got plenty of mana, so I'll just hit him with a sticky flame and run away. I'll reapply the sticky flame. There we go, and we've got a gift from Sif Muna. How's our skills doing? Dodging is up to 6. We want to get that up to about 10, 12. Let's see what kind of book we got. Mephitic Cloud, Orb of Destruction, and Firestorm. Okay, I'm going to memorize Mephitic Cloud immediately. And let's shuffle our spells around. Press equals, uh, spells. Let's swap out Mephitic Cloud and Sticky Flame. It's always tricky to do this. Now I have to remember that Sticky Flame's on E, because if I cast a Mephitic Cloud adjacent to myself, I might accidentally give myself some trouble and confuse myself. I'm going to fit a clouds at 6%. It's fairly weak. We'll get air up to about 2. And we will turn dodging off until air is up to 2. Actually, let's turn everything off. And let's just get the job done. Maybe 3. Uh, Alright, I almost did it right there. Sticky flame. I almost hit him with a Mephitic Cloud accidentally. Now we can use our Mephitic Cloud. You don't necessarily need Mephitic Cloud at full power. Hmm. Let's hit them with a Mephitic Cloud again. Actually, these are very good candidates for, for Fireball. Oh, here's another elephant. We'll get a fireball on him. A sticky flame, and run away. I almost fit a clouded him again. There we go. Air magic's at level 2. And I feel like getting it up to level 3. We're going to fireball the whites here, just to take them out quickly, because I hate whites. Looks like that's the entrance to the Orcish Mines. That's why all these orcs are hanging around there. No, it's just a statue. We'll eat something very small so we can eat it in very few turns, even though it's just an orc. And then eat the orc corpse. Altar to bow. No fear of ice beasts when you're a fire elementalist. Ooh, I want to get a space between us. We'll get a. F we'll. Uh, I wanted to get them on the water so there's steam at least. As long as there's two together, I'll fireball. And you don't want that jelly hitting you because it will corrode your armor. Okay, into the lair we go. A lot of sheep, but that's okay. They they actually hit fairly hard. We might as well draw them up. They're all damaged. One flame tongue took out each of them. Now we'll just sticky flame them. Oops. Somehow I got two with one sticky flame there. Maybe because they're sheep, they set each other on fire. Because they're so furry. Spiny frogs, we don't want to we don't want to fool around with much sticky flame and now everything's after us that's okay these are weak enemies though our flame sh tongue should take them all out okay Fruk is here I don't know what kind of creature he is but he's getting fireballed I'm standing in a pretty bad place right now but I have fireball. 
so I can sort of take out crowds of enemies. I really want him dead. We'll get another fireball on him. That's the last one. This should kill him. It did, and now we run away. Oh, and he was a conjurer. Um. Wow, we took a hit. We're going to sticky flame him. And run. Those things are quite dangerous. We're starving. Luckily, they're slow. Now we eat a meat ration. I think we have time. Yep. Let's see if he'll walk through. The best way to conserve mana in this situation, since we're in a hallway, let's see if he walks through a flame cloud, and he is. I don't want him to hit me again. I'm going to stand back. And yet another flame cl cloud. I have half health. It might be worth drinking a heal wounds. There we go. Now I can pass once. He missed. Pass twice, and he's dead. Air magic's at level six. I forgot to turn it off. That goes off immediately. And let's get our fire magic dodging and spell casting back on. Air magic's always useful, so it's not so bad that I left it on till level six. It's fireball time with these clusters of yaks. Try to group them together a little more. And the last one, we can sticky flame if I don't press Mephitic Cloud. It's been a pretty dangerous first level of the lair. Now I'm using my dagger. But they're only rats. And jackals. You don't usually see those spiny worms on the first level of the lair. And it was only Sticky Flame that gave me the confidence to be able to take him out. This fellow here is getting Sticky Flamed. Just a moment. Okay. That should get rid of the annoying Skype sounds. friend of mine is developing some Bitcoin theorem. We are burdens. Let's test these wands so hopefully we can get rid of one of them. Fireball. We don't really need the fire. Oh, it's a random effect. Okay, we'll drop that. If it was fireball, I would have dropped it because I have fireball. And my fireball is more powerful than a wand fireball. If it's a single enemy, I generally use sticky flame. But if it's an enemy like this that's fairly dangerous at range, I'll get used fireball. It's better to stay a little quiet though. But this level's almost all polished up, so I don't mind making a bit of a racket. We don't need that chunk of a guana flesh. Okay, that's the level. So our fire elementalist is doing fairly well. Dodging is getting up there. We found the lair on what? Dungeon level 9. We faced an invisible horror. And nothing proved too difficult once we got Sticky Flame up. Let's read uh, this unidentified scroll. And we might want to make a stash here. We'll drop our books and so forth. And that's about it for now. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.